So, in today's vlog, let's talk about how awesome this Grand Am has been so far. Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to this installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs, and I want to thank you for joining me on this wonderful spring afternoon. Today is the second day of spring. Couldn't ask for better weather. Light jacket, the sun is out, it's gorgeous out here. And I'm really happy because the last few times I've been to this park, <laughs> like this was all ice, it's been freezing. So I can't, can't wait to be out here doing more videos in this kind of weather, this is nice. But anyway, today we're gonna to talk about the 03 Pontiac Grand Am GT that I bought, uh, what, almost eight? Eight, nine months ago almost? So we've had it for, I know it's been over a half a year, so either eight or nine months. Bought it at the end of July of last year, and uh, the usual, didn't run good, needed uh, you know intake and head gaskets. That was it. Um, there really hasn't been a whole lot we've had to do to this thing to get it back on the road. And needless to say, it's on the road and it's been wonderful so far. Absolutely wonderful. So this car, as you know, weird as it may sound, this was one of the cars that I've always wanted to own ever since I was a kid. You know, everybody has their cars that they want you know, their dream cars. A lot of people dream about owning Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Dodge Vipers, even Corvettes, Camaros. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I had a few of those too. But there were two cars that I've always wanted to have. One of them, of course, was the Pontiac Aztec, which I had two of. And this was the other one. This one actually probably I wanted more than the Aztec, even though the Aztec was an awesome car in itself uh, for many other reasons. But this one I think is the one I've always wanted. And it might seem a little strange, you know, it's just a Grand Am. There's nothing really special about it. It is just another General Motors car that was built alongside a few other cars on the same platform but the Pontiac one stood out the most to me anyway um, you know it all started when my aunt got a brand new 2000 Grand Am GT Coupe and uh, I fell in love with that car immediately. I mean, there are just so many things about this car that just blew me away, you know, especially, you know, being 13 years old. I mean, the, the, the way that the car looks, the styling, the shapes, the features, I mean, there was just so much to this thing. And immediately I fell in love with the car and eventually you know I, I you know wanted it to to kind of make it a goal in life to have one but you know I held off and uh, didn't really buy them when they were still in decent shape so after I got rid of the last Aztec I decided this would be the time to find one and I tried to find one that was in drivable shape. I tried to find one that wasn't rusted out. I tried to find one that didn't really need a whole lot. And, well, this is it. This is the one that I, <laughs> I ended up getting. Even though, to be honest, the color choice really wasn't my first. But, it's grown on me quite, you know, when it's all cleaned up, like, you know, I took it through the wash uh, sometime last week. And, uh, yeah, I mean, when it's clean, it's actually a really nice color. It shines pretty well. Um, but 
you know, the, the green just really wasn't my first, first uh, pick. <laughs> but you know what? It's okay. Um, the rest of the car is in awesome shape. Maybe not awesome, but it's in, it's in better shape than most Grand Ams nowadays are. Because let's face it, there aren't too many Grand Ams out there that look nearly as good as this one. I mean, this one has flaws, but it's not. none of the actual body panels on the outside are rotting out yet. There's no rust around the gas cap yet. Um, just, you know, the cladding's still, you know, pretty much intact. I mean, a lot of these nowadays are in rough shape. You can't find them this nice. So that is one of the other reasons why I went with this one when I went and looked at it. It was a nice looking one and I decided this is going to be the one. Now this one of course when I bought it somebody had bumped into it so it's got bumper damage. The headlights kind of pushed in a little bit. The fender is creased when you open the door. That's really it. The rest of this side is was you know still in awesome shape other than the occasional scuff marks and stuff here and there that that might be present the back looks good the back looks really good on this side there's a couple of scratches here that went through the paint they're kind of like dents actually too if you look at it in the right light um paint marks you know or uh you know paint kind of chipping off there like i said there's no rust here Usually these are the some of the first spots to start rusting out on these GM cars. Uh, the rest of it's pretty good. The lower part of the door cladding sticks out a little bit. It makes it look like the door's not closed all the way, but it is closed. And of course there's these here, these, these rust marks on the door sill. They're on both sides. I could probably find a way to fix that. I think I have to take the window out and stuff and this actual assembly might come off um, so I don't know that might be something to think of think about doing in time perhaps there is of course the headlights over time the original headlights will uh, get foggy and when I bought the car and did a first cleaning on it I got it to clear up but they always come back this uh, headlight is actually getting moisture in it too that is a very common issue with the GM headlights of this uh, platform. My mom's Malibu, which is on a you know similar platform, had the exact same issue where water collects in all the lenses. Um, but I'm ordering another light, so I'm probably going to do that uh, sometime this week. This headlight was replaced already when I bought the car, so that's why we have one clear light, one cloudy light, and uh, yeah, so. We're just going to get rid of this one, like I said, sometime this week, and uh, then they will both be clear, and uh, they will look better. The fog light down below also looks like it is uh, clouding up a little bit, but I'm not going through the process of changing a fog light. Um, they're recessed pretty well, so you, you can't really notice it, but this is an obvious thing to notice, so we're going to take care of that. Getting back to why I loved this car so much as a kid, you know, a lot of it had to do with you know obviously there are many factors on why I've always wanted this car um, I mean just look at this shape look at the styling I don't care what anybody says I don't think this is a is uh, is a is a style that ever you know goes out of fashion you know I think this the way this car looks is timeless um, you know especially you know when I was I was 13 you know all my family ever had were minivans and stuff so you know, seeing something like this in person for the first time <laughs> uh, blew my mind, you know, so that has always stuck with me. Um, my aunt's was a, a coupe like this, so uh, originally when I was looking for them, I was going to, you know, consider doing the four-door one. I do like the way the four-doors look. Um, obviously, getting stuff in and out of the back is easier with the four-door, but... Um, I don't know, something just told me to look at this one, uh, you know, even though it was a coupe. And I'm glad I went with the, the coupe. This is the first coupe that I've had since my very first car, which was my 94 Pontiac Sunbird. 
So it's actually kind of cool to have a two-door again. Um, and I'm, I'm really glad that I ended up finding the two-door. I always loved how the cladding on this uh, car looked. And um, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to have a GT. Um, the Ram Air, the Ram Air, uh, you know, intake scoops had to have that. That's a GT only function. And this one, I was lucky enough to actually have the Pontiac license plate cover with this car also. Um, here in Ohio, you used to have to have two plates on your car, and I'm sure people just got rid of those because you don't need them in Ohio. You need to have a license plate. But as of last year, they got rid of that rule, and this car was very, um, you know, lucky enough to actually have that plate cover still there. So I put it back on, and I love it. These wheels, I, I've always had a thing for these wheels. My aunt had uh, the chrome version of these five-spoke wheels. Um, so fun fact, these are not the wheels that are supposed to be on this car because in 2003, they stopped offering these wheels for the GT model. So these wheels were swapped out at some point in time. And I'm actually going to do a video uh, in the near future uh, since I had to pull the RPO codes out for uh, a new stereo programming that we just did. I'm going to um, actually decode the RPO codes and we're going to find out um, you know, we're gonna find out what wheels actually came on this and maybe see if we can learn any more about this car by uh, deciphering the RPO code. So stay tuned to that if you're interested. I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna dig into that uh, maybe by the, uh, the next vlog or, or something. So I'm very curious to put all that together and maybe we can learn what wheels were on this uh, Grand Am when it was brand new from the factory. I honestly don't know if this green stripe was uh, a factory option or not. This is the only Grand Am I think that I've ever seen with uh, with a pinstripe. So I don't know if somebody actually added the stripes afterwards at some point in time or if they came from the factory like that. I honestly did not care about it at first and I wanted to take them off. But um, then I just kind of figured it's not worth it. So we're going to leave it on. Um, again, it's something that kind of... Uh, grew on me a little bit. When I took this car to school for the first time, somebody saw it and asked me if I liked the Seattle Seahawks, I think, because the car looks like Seattle Seahawks, uh, Seahawks colors. And uh, I honestly don't even pay attention to football, so uh, that's just coincidental. <laughs> Seriously though, I mean, this color is really nice in the light when it's clean. That's why her name is Jade. It's like a jade green. I know that's not the name of the color. I think the real color is called like polo green metallic or something. I don't know. I still love the interior design of this car. Um, it's messy. I got some. I got some stuff everywhere. But we're finally entering spring, so I get to give this car its very first interior detail. Um, you know, in the upcoming uh, weeks, maybe even this week. It's supposed to be nice for the rest of the week, so maybe on my next day off, I'll tackle the. Uh, We'll tackle the inside but this interior i think is uh, again you know i think it was ahead of its time i love the shapes i love the round bezels around the air vents i love always loved how the gauge cluster was designed with these um two large bezels and the, how the speedometer and tack are almost look like they're entirely different gauges like you know um entirely different cluster pieces um the four spoke leather wrap steering wheel. I mean, I just absolutely loved this as a kid and I love being behind the wheel of this car. Um, definitely not a boring uh, view. You know, that's, that's just something I always, you know, looked forward to when I thought of this car was actually having one and being behind the wheel, um, you know, all the time. Uh, the seats. You know, my, my aunt's had leather, and I've thought about putting the leather seats in this thing, but around here, I can't find them where they're in good enough shape. Um, every leather seat that I come across is all torn, all ripped, 
giant holes, you know, I am just going to leave it with the cloth. I actually really like the, the way the cloth looks. The, the fabric for the age is still really soft. GT headrests with the, you know, the opening. Um, yeah, so we're, I'm just going to leave those as is. I'm happy with them. But we're going to give them a good cleaning and stuff, you know, vacuuming and whatnot. Um, so I can't wait to do that. This GT has a lot of the same features that my aunts had, you know, like whenever I thought about going after a Grand Am, I always pictured that perfect GT in my mind, which was the ones that my aunts had. And um, the only thing that I could think of that is missing off of the ones that she had were the steering wheel buttons. I don't have the steering wheel buttons for the audio here. The leather... And honestly, I feel like that's it. Everything else, everything else is the same. Automatic headlights, obviously we've got fog lights, same gauge cluster, traction control, the monsoon, her later one had this monsoon stereo system uh, with the cassette and CD. Um, the climate controls are all the same. Um, the sunroof. So, I mean, all of this stuff is pretty much the same. This, you know, this is a really good spec GT. Um, a lot of this stuff probably came uh, standard with the exception of maybe this monsoon uh, unit. I know you can get the monsoon without the cassette. So maybe this one probably had the, um, the optional cassette and CD combo. But I think the monsoon came on a GT regardless for 2003. Um, obviously, Cruz. So this, uh, yeah, this, 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 is, this is my dream car, you know, basically. This is, this is what I've wanted. And then, of course, there's this. The legendary 3400 V6 engine. And this was the engine that I looked up to a lot when I was a kid. It's nothing special. This engine was found in so many other... Uh, you know GM cars and uh, but in this one for some reason it just seems special paired up with that Ram Air I mean this uh, I think this is a great engine in this car and by today's standards it is underpowered <laughs> um, the fuel economy is definitely far from great um, especially for the size that it is but you know what, you know, I am, uh, you know, I'm just in love with this, with this engine. Uh, I loved it in the Aztec. I loved it in uh, my Alero. I mean, when I, I just always kind of looked up to this, uh, you know, this engine. This was, this was like um, a V12 in my eyes when I was, <laughs> you know, 13. So. It just sounds kind of weird to say, I know it does, but, you know, seriously, this, uh, you know, this engine, easy to work on, it was easy to rebuild both, both times that I've had to do it in my, uh, my project cars, um, and honestly, you know, these, these will last forever, um, as long as they're properly maintained, you get those intake gaskets corrected like we did on this one, um, and, you know, it's running like a top, uh, this thing, we just did its first full 3,000 mile service uh, or interval, 3,000 mile interval oil change. We just did it for the first time uh, last weekend. And I'll tell you what, before I changed it, I checked the oil. And this thing has not lost any significant amount of oil. Um, it was still at the full mark on the dipstick. Now the crank pulley seal is seeping. And I do believe the rear main is seeping also when you look underneath. But it hasn't been enough for this thing to actually lose any significant amount of oil. And I'm really surprised, especially considering the condition that this particular engine was in when I bought this car. This thing was, all the coolant had leaked into the engine. It, the crankcase was pretty much full of like twice the amount of liquid that it should have in it. And it was just straight chocolate milk when we drained the oil uh, for the very first time. So I really wasn't sure what the fate of this engine was going to be um we had a bad lifter the, one of the 
I think it was one of the number five lifters, if I'm not mistaken. One of the number five lifters were ticking like crazy because they were all plugged up with sludge and oil, or bad oil. And um, when I rebuilt the engine, I tore all of the lifters apart, tried to clean them out. And uh, on cold starts and stuff, you know, the lifters tick. That's something that I've always experienced with these engines. But once it's warmed up, the tick goes away. Um, and uh, I don't really see it being a problem, uh, you know, at this time. So, you know, this thing has been, he has proven to be a really good, um, a good running engine. And I'm glad I didn't replace it. I'm glad I made it look a little prettier than it did when I got it. Clear oil cap. I mean, it's just, it's running like a top. So enough about that for now. Why don't we take a break and talk about what I've had to put into this car so far, including the cost of what I paid for the car and where we stand with it as of about, what, like I said, nine months, you know. And like I said, as you know, there really wasn't a whole lot we've had to do to this thing. Um, I'm sure there's going to be more stuff in the, the future. I know that there's some stuff in the near future that have to be, uh, has to be replaced on this car. Um, but so far, you know not a whole lot and it's doing great so this 03 Pontiac Grand Am GT coupe I bought this thing for $750 um, the lady I bought it from originally I think her ad listing was up around 1300 when she was selling it she knocked it down to the eights I offered her 750 and she accepted it so we bought this thing for $750 cost me $58 to get it towed to my house uh, that's trailer rental uh, we had to fix the turn signal and the hazard switch on the dashboard um, the turn signals occasionally would not work and um, the car actually came with a brand new hazard switch so we popped the old one out of the dashboard and put the new one in and that that has so far fixed it so I think that was the issue um, so the hazard switch, I didn't have to pay for it. It came with the car. Uh, same with the front fog light. The front fog light was completely missing. And, uh, well, we, we would have to actually find more pieces to get the fog light into the car. But we replaced the fog light, and that didn't cost me anything either as that fog light came with the car. The front bumper reinforcer, that's the piece that is hiding under the front bumper cover. It's a plastic piece, and that's what the fog light is supposed to go into. Uh, whenever somebody hit the front of the car, it broke, and that's why the fog light was gone to begin with. So I had to replace the front bumper reinforcer, and that was $20. Uh, I had to replace the horn because somebody put some sort of uh, aftermarket horn or something, had it wired up really bad. Water actually got in the horn, and I didn't notice that until after the front bumper was removed when we were doing the fog light job. So I had to go buy a horn also, and the horn with new wiring cost me $4. Uh, I had to buy one new, not new, I had to buy another uh, CD player, Monsoon Stereo from the junkyard, because the uh, I destroyed the face plate wiring on the original one that came with the car, and that's all I needed. I needed the the faceplate, which turned out was really crappy, but it got the job done for a while. So that stereo cost me $25. I had to rewire the stereo with the factory harness. Uh, somebody had some sort of aftermarket stereo in here at one time and did a really horrible wiring job. All the wires were the same color and they were taped and the right speaker was making a buzzing noise. So we rewired the stereo harness with a factory one that stereo harness cost me three bucks from the junkyard. Uh, we had to replace the sunroof assembly. When I bought the Grand Am, the sunroof was actually stuck open and uh, kind of crooked. The track was off. This track's not perfect. The passenger side sticks up a little more than the driver's side. Um, I might just have to adjust the glass, but this one works good. So we pulled this out of another Grand Am at the junkyard, and it cost me $38.00 to buy that sunroof assembly. We had to buy three relays, a coolant bypass tube, and a rear exhaust shield. Um, 
that trip to the junkyard cost me $12 for all of those items. Um, that was when the engine was still torn apart. Then we get to the engine work. Uh, the Felpro head gasket kit that I bought, which was the head gasket kit that included the metal intake gaskets, the um, heavy duty head gaskets, and a bunch of other things that we needed to put the engine back together. $140. And I do believe I got that from Rock Auto, if I'm not mistaken. So $140. Uh, the Felpro head bolts, we had to go buy those at Summit Racing. Uh, that was $22. We had to replace the oil pump drive O-ring. Those have a tendency to leak over time. So while the engine was apart, we pulled the oil, uh, oil pump shaft out, replaced the O-ring. We got that from the actual Chevy dealer, and that was $2. Uh, we had to buy a new thermostat, so the thermostat was $7. We replaced the spark plug wires for $30. The spark plugs were actually still in pretty decent shape, so we left the spark plugs this time. Uh, we bought four gently used tires, 225-50-16s. The wrong size tire was actually on this car when I bought it, and I didn't know it, but they were in horrible shape. These junkyard tires are actually holding up really well, and I was really impressed with them during the winter, to be honest with you. But these four tires cost me $120 from the junkyard. We had to replace the driver's side window regulator clip. And fun fact, we're going to be doing it again. But this half of the window fell down. Um, so the, it was actually the, the regulator itself, I think, a piece actually broke off or came out of place on the regulator. And, uh, but we replaced the clips and the special epoxy. Unfortunately, that side came undone again, but as long as nothing sticks to the window, I can still use it and it's not pulling the window out of the track. But that job's coming up again at some point in the future. Anyway, that cost $40 to do that. It was the epoxy. The epoxy was about $30. It was, it was ridiculous. We had to replace the fuel pressure regulator. Uh, didn't pay for that. Uh, actually, I got that uh, off of a junk engine that we had at the school. They told me I can take it. It tested good. And to my knowledge, it is still doing good. So fuel pressure regulator, free. We had to replace a section of the vacuum line for the HVAC controls. Um, somehow it broke off. And uh, yeah, so got a piece of vacuum hose from work um, and that didn't cost me anything. Uh, we had to fix the turn signal switch itself because uh, we were getting a random clicking and uh, that's a pretty common thing. We tore it apart, cleaned the contacts in it, put some Vaseline on it to kind of act as a dielectric grease. Haven't had a problem with it since. So repair for the multifunction switch, free. And we just bought our refurbished, or not refurbished, our used CD and cassette monsoon stereo system with fully working uh, display and backlighting at night and whatnot. The clock actually shows up now and all that stuff. And we ordered that from Stereo Squad in Aurora, Colorado. Got that on eBay. The stereo was 70 bucks. It was $22 shipping, so about $92 is where we are with that. I'm just going to count all that, you know. So $92 for the stereo. So all in all, so far, including the price of the car and whatnot, I have spent $1,363 on this delightful 2003 Pontiac Grand Am GT. If we're taking away the price of the car and the trailer rental, I have only spent $555 in parts. So, so far, the, the money that I've spent on the car to fix it up has not surpassed what I paid for the car in the, the nine months that we've had it. That's pretty awesome, in my opinion, you know? Um, so, I, like I said, there's other things I know that are going to have to be replaced. Brakes are for sure one of the things that have to be replaced. The pulsation. It's getting really bad, so we need to replace the rotors and pads. I think the pads are still in pretty decent shape, but if we're going to do the job right, we're going to get rid of the rotors and pads and just do it from scratch. Um, what else? There was something else that I 
was just thinking about. The headlight, I know we gotta replace the headlight. I think the headlight's gonna cost about $40. Um, that's something that, you know, has to be replaced. Um, we got some suspension stuff, I think. I think the control arms up front are gonna have to be replaced. Um, that's, I'm sure that's coming. Um, I know when I bought the car and had it uh, looked at for the first time when I had it at work, uh, control arms were, were something on the list. It's handling fine. Uh, we gave it a four wheel alignment actually. I did it at the dealership. All but one side of the car, like one wheel was in alignment. The backs were out ridiculously and the fronts were pretty bad too. Um, the, the shocks were replaced at one point in time uh, already before I bought the car and whoever put the shocks in um, had the alignment way way out so it's it was all perfectly aligned and it drove a lot better after that and it still does I think I definitely got one of the better Grand Ams out there I know you might be able to find a, you know these that are in more of a pristine condition but it's hard to find um, you know the quality of of these GM cars you know over the years you never really noticed what kind of uh, you know toll these were gonna have uh, in the future as they aged um, GM probably didn't expect these cars to be on the road for as long as they were to be honest with you but when you get things uh, like the curling dashboards like this one this one's got a little bit of the curling dashboard going on from the the heat and stuff that's something that's actually pretty common on a lot of GM cars from this era but they probably didn't think the cars were gonna live that long to see you know the the Sun and stuff actually take a toll in that manner um, so I guess you know, there's a, a few disappointing spots to, you know, having these, um, you know, older GM cars from the late 90s and early 2000s. Another thing I've noticed too, uh, and, and one thing that, you know, you just kind of, you kind of have to let go at some point. There's only one usable cup holder in this car, and it's the one that sits right behind the gear shifter. Uh, there are two cup holders up in front of the shifter but what I've come to learn is you can't really use those cup holders unless this car is uh, in gear in fact if you look at a lot of uh, Grand Ams you know on Craigslist or eBay or wherever you're looking to find uh, one of these things you're probably gonna notice that the uh, climate controls are always missing a knob or two or all of them who knows the climate control knobs tend to break really easily and I always kind of wondered why why is that well I'll tell you you put a cup in the cup holder forget about it when you're driving and then you immediately put your car in park after you're done driving it and guess what that cup gets pushed into the climate control knobs uh, <laughs> once that shifter is in park so I think that's why so I don't really use those cup holders uh, I almost did it one time I had a cup sitting there and I went to go put the car in park and I I actually reached park but my hand was still on the shifter when I felt the cup push into my fist and noticed it was going into you know the the dash that's when I realized that is probably why these knobs break so the cup holders don't really get used up there and therefore I only have one usable cup holder up front now there are two cup holders in the back behind the center console but those are only really useful if you got back seat people and nobody rides in this car but me and the wife so those cup holders they just hold extra stuff if I happen to have extra stuff sitting in one of these cup holders so my you know I have a, a 15 Ford Fusion that I make payments on. It's a newer car, it's got better technology, it's more updated. And you know, I honestly find myself wanting to drive this more than the Fusion. And I love my Fusion. I mean, that car is, that's probably 
the best car that I've had so far, uh, to be quite honest with you. But this car, for some reason, you know, I am just so addicted to driving this car. Um, you know, I, I find it fun. I love having the V6, you know, the, the, the power of the V6. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, it, this thing takes off pretty decently. Um, <laughs> it, it really does. I've, I've nailed it to the floor uh, once or twice and I can't complain about it. I mean, it's, it's nothing compared to like a turbocharged car or a supercharged car or anything like that, but it's fun. Um, and I, I just, I love driving this car uh, almost more than the Fusion. And it's not even, like I said, that I, I hate the Fusion. I absolutely love my Fusion. That car is an incredible car to drive. But there's just something, I don't know if it's just something nostalgic about this car. It brings out the teenager in me or something. I don't know. The, 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 the way it looks behind the wheel, uh, when everything's you know alive in the car, uh, it handles good. I mean, it's definitely not the most comfortable ride. This thing, you feel every little bump and, and, and nick in the road, you know? Um, but I don't care. I mean, I think the suspension, it having the GT, you know, it obviously has the GT suspension. So it's kind of designed to be a little rougher and handle, you know, more, you know, more, you know, curves and stuff in the road. Uh, but I don't know. I just love driving this car. It did phenomenal all winter long, um, which really caught me by surprise. So it's just, you know, I don't know. I just, <laughs> if I get, if I have the opportunity to drive this thing, I'm going to, I'm going to pick this one, um, to drive for some reason. I just, I love it. Days like this, you get your sunroof open. You usually have the, uh, you know, the stereo turned up. I don't know. It's just, it's just a phenomenal car. I don't know why people, you know, some people hate, absolutely hate these things, but the way it looks behind the wheel, the way it looks outside, like I said, the power. I just love this car. My aunt actually lived um, on this property where like, you know, she had a nice long private driveway and this huge driveway and all this stuff. And she would actually let me drive the car down the driveway and back. Um, <laughs> so that was actually like, you know, the, the first time that I had actually ever like driven um, you know, a Grand Am was actually when I was 13 driving up and down this really long driveway. All right, everyone. So there you have it. That is my ramble <laughs> for, uh, you know, for today on my 03 Pontiac Grand Am GT. Absolutely phenomenal car. I'm really glad I got this one. I can only hope that this thing stays good to me uh, for as long as I continue to have it. Um, absolutely love this car. And it's been doing really well. So if you guys enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe. Check out teespring.com slash stores slash Mike's Vehicle Spotlight for all of your MVS and vlog merchandise. And that's all that I have for this afternoon. So I will see you guys next time. And I want to thank you so much for joining me. Take care.